Alright, today we have the Technics RSM250. Now what I want to try and do with this is actually go through a bit of the procedure to set the bias, the recording bias. It's actually quite simple on this one, in theory, actually doing it in practice is a little bit more tricky. And that's mostly because of where the test points actually are and how sort of, they're actually a little bit inaccessible. When I do some more work on this, I will probably actually do something to address that. I'll give a bit of a close-up photo or, or video a little bit later, and that might explain it a little bit. So, anyway, so we have this nice sine wave here. It is sort of, you know, looking a little bit flaky, but I think that's actually because of the uh, how, how I'm doing the measurement at the moment. But what we're looking at, basically, is this uh, maximum value for normal, it should be around, I think, 300 millivolts. What they do to make it easy for you to figure out what your um, what current you've got going through to your bias, uh, to the record head through the bias, is they actually include a, um, a 10 ohm resistor. So basically you just drop, you know, a decimal and you know shift it one one place and that's your, your current so it makes actually that kind of uh, calculation very simple in, and you really only have to look at the uh, the numbers here you don't really have to sit there with the calculator and try and figure it out so we're getting you know it's it's around uh, 312 is the maximum and the mean is what 320 so it's probably a little high So we have an adjuster duty here. So we'll see if we get it going down a little bit. And I think that's the wrong way, so let's go this way. Although it's slow to recalculate the mean, but anyway. I find just having it on that, um, that averaging just sort of slows down the, the flicking of the numbers. Maximum 2A, 2s, whatever. So I think we've probably gone a little bit too far the wrong way. So maximum of about 280, 260. What, what have we got here? Let's have a look. Oh, right. For, for normal, it's supposed to be 3.30. Okay. I was doing it from memory, and my memory's wrong, so... We were probably actually right when we started, annoyingly, or, you know, near enough. Now this does sort of demonstrate my inexperience with this scope a little bit. But we're getting, you know, a maximum sort of hovering around, you know, like 328, 330 something, 336. So I might call that actually good enough. Now what we want to look at then, flick the tape selector and it should rise a bit. So we should get to about 370. And I think we're, you know, we could say that that's close enough to 370. Then we should be moving to about 415, which again I think is kind of close enough, and 700 for metal. So it's 330 for normal, uh, FECR 370, I think chromium is 415, and then metal 700. So I think that's all right. Now the next thing is we've got to obviously get the other channel involved. And I'll just pause it there because that's actually where it starts getting a little bit tricky. All right, well, for a change, I actually managed to get the probe hooked up quite uh, well without too many dramas this time. And that's actually where the real difficulty comes in with this. So there's a bit of offset in those uh, waveforms, and I don't think that's actually a trouble. 
Uh, but obviously what we want to get is we want to get those peaks the same. That's pretty good. For maximum 720, we might be a bit high there. Right, drop it down a fraction. And also on this one, just drop it down just a fraction. Just get them basically even. And I think. Oh, 688, 672, 696, whatever. That looks alright. Let's drop it down, see how we go. And strangely, this, you know, you get looking nice, but then it looks not so nice. So, you know, one channel looks higher than the other. I don't know exactly what the tolerance is for these. I suppose we could actually argue that that is actually a bit high there. Let's just drop it down just a uh, fraction. Let's see if we're a little bit closer to it. Still looking a bit high, isn't it? Let's just wind that in just a fraction more. That looks more decent. And then we get to here and it looks a little bit, you know, a little bit out. So I'm not sure exactly how much that matters, but uh, we just give it a touch more back this way. Might be that we're actually not quite centered on these either. So it looks good. Yellow is a little bit weak down on the um, normal setting. It improves slightly there. And then it sort of comes a little bit strong. Interestingly, they're both basically on this same bottom line here. It's just peaking in one direction. And I don't know if you can see it, but it doesn't look it sort of looks like it's got a slightly weird shape and I don't know if that's again partly because I'm using this thing wrong or if there's some actual problem in there. So anyway, I'm pretty happy that that's probably set okay. Um, the issue I was having was that uh, I was trying to set the balance in the recording. So basically recording a, a one kilohertz test tone and then checking the recording to make sure that you know left and right channel were actually right. Now, doing that on normal took a while to get it right, um, to get them sort of even. And I was pretty happy that I got it where it needed to be. And then I flipped it over to metal, and then all of a sudden the left channel um, dominated. It was just way higher than the right channel. Um, so I'm not really sure exactly what's going on. But it seems like it shouldn't be that way. Okay, so the real issue here in getting these probes hooked up is I've only got these alligator clip things for um, for hooking over to that resistor and in there if you can see that right in the center there is you know it's actually hard to get the clip on and then get it to actually 
create a nice connection. Uh, there's probably, you know, different versions of these things with the nice little hooky bits, which I don't have, but anyway, I've got to use what I've got on me. So anyway, that'll be uh, something next time I go down to the uh, electronics district, I'll have a look for those. But anyway, that's really what's been causing me the problem, and and then as you can see here, as we've as we move these around, it goes all fuzzy and it doesn't look so pretty anymore. But that's really just comes down to that connection. So it would be nice actually to have like you know maybe some proper test points that you can actually hook onto or clip onto. So I might consider whether I do something with that. Um, the easy solution would probably be to um, oh look at that it's come loose. Uh, would probably be just to get some new resistors and stand them off the board and just you know have them floating up a bit like what they've done here with this you know two watt resistor just stand it up a bit I probably shouldn't actually put my fingers in there because that's all live uh, anyway so that might be and there you go you can see that uh, resistor there R17 and R18 the two little fenders there Okay, just to explain what's going on, I'm trying to get this uh, Technics sorted because I never actually did that full setup. I didn't set bias and all those sorts of things. I did know that there was a problem between left and right channel recording, but uh, you know it's just taken me a while to you know put it on the list of priorities and things to get done. So I do want to get it fixed, partly because I'm semi-deciding whether I actually want to keep that Pioneer CT7100 or you know maybe this one uh, this one looks nice it looks the part for me I, I quite like the styling of it uh, if I can get it working well and you know it has a decent uh, wear and flutter and all that sort of stuff then you know maybe I'll uh, I will hang on to it um, but anyway it's nice to have those sorts of choices I guess so this brings me to a point actually about the uh, serviceability between the Technics and the Pioneer. One of the things that they've done with this Technics, well they've done a few things that are actually really nice and make life quite easy. Uh, I've mentioned one before, you've got those 10 ohm resistors that are on the board and that become your test point. Uh, it just makes it easy, you look at the, the voltages across them and you know that basically indicates where you need to be so when you're setting the vice you know what to do it's not a you know it's not too hard to figure out with the Pioneer their procedure is basically record some tapes and and muck around until you actually get something that you're happy with that to me doesn't seem like something that they would be doing at the factory so I am a fan of this Technic stuff, uh, less so a fan of the Pioneer, and it really comes down to the care and attention to detail that went to the service manual and the serviceability of the products that they made. They really thought about, you know, how can we give the technicians everything they need to know to put these back together or get them back working the way that they were supposed to be, you know, the way they were designed to work. Um, and they go through everything. It's a very logical you know procedure it's like you know start with you know if you want to set this you know get your, your tape speed set get your azimuth set do your output levels from there you can do everything else then you start moving into right now check your raise head bias check your your bias then check your output levels and all of those things you know flow in a very logical sequence and it's not left up to you know magic in a way like the pioneer wants you to to go through this huge ordeal to figure out where things are working